there for a momentary notice. Uh, fucking just decided, you know, or we're gonna adopt these kittens. And now we're dealing with them, but they are terrorizing everything in that room. Here, let me show you. Let me show you Kiwi this morning. One second. Uh, Caleb's calling me. Have him join the chat. Oh, yeah, no, I like your idea, dude. Fuck going in the middle. I like that idea. This guy's got a good idea. Where's the tip? I'm getting pretty far in Binding of Isaac right now. Nice. Not fast, but slow. I'm lacking on Apex, and so I'm Apex grinding today. Yeah. I've well, been... it's not really Apex grinding, it's more of like... I haven't done my daily missions in a minute, and... My dumbass bought the battle pass because, like, it, there are some pretty cool skins on this battle pass. And I kinda. Oh, that person's a bitch and disconnected. But I might as well get my money's worth, you know? There's <laughs> uh, a lot going on on this screen right now. Okay, so we're just going to... Where are they? I don't think this is what they're looking for. Um. I was doing so good and then I just lost like all of my health. Why am I finding all these good tips? Okay. 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 Wait, well, you know, um, I'm not in the middle of battle. Uh, how was your turkey day, man? Uh, it was good. Oh, no, I was I was asking you. Uh, I'm so confused. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with his phone. He called me and I couldn't even hear him. Oh shit, I forgot the game's at one. 
Can you add me to your guys' call? You're the boss. I got you. Where you at? Where you at? There you go. Can you come? Are you adding me? I did it. <laughs> okay, okay, no. Okay, we're well, all right now. I realized why you couldn't hear me, Chris. Why? Um, for some reason, um, I was on Discord already on on a server, so oh. my voice was going through that. Oh, I was about to say, because I could not hear you, like, at all. You're really quiet right now. I am? That's surprising. Uh, it's probably because I'm, like, not right in front of my mic. <laughs> I was using the heads I win tails you lose deck on uh, spell table a few nights ago. How did it go? Um. Well, I like it more than all of my other decks. It's probably um, interesting. So essentially, one commander works so where at the beginning of combat you keep flipping a coin until you lose a coin flip, and then for each coin flip a player succeeds, you draw a card. And then for the other one. Uh, you do the same thing, you keep flipping until you lose a coin flip, and then for every time a player wins a coin flip, it doubles his power and toughness. Okay, I can see where that would be pretty fun and disgusting. There's an enchantment in the game that makes it so, um, whenever you attack, for each attacking creature, you roll a coin, or you roll a dice, or you fucking, uh, flip a coin for them. If you win the coin flip, and they proceed to do combat damage, that combat damage is doubled. Jesus. But, if I fail the coin flip, their damage gets prevented. Okay, so it's really just like... The, the deck's name is very accurate to what it is. It's like, I win if I win, and if you, you lose if you lose. Yes, exactly. So my the very final swing I put on somebody, I swung at him with my one of my commanders for 48-48 without the enchantment. Um and then I swung at him for a 12-12. I flipped a coin for the enchantment and I won both of them. So that was going to be 48 damage doubled and 12 damage doubled. That guy was fucked. Sorry, I'm like focusing on the. I'm. I have to unlock. Blah, 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 unlocking Lilith, so I gotta do greed mode on Azazel. Mhm. Mm and yeah, it's not working. Well, the way I beat uh, greed mode for Shane is I kept fucking re-rolling. Like I would get to like the second floor. And if I didn't get anything that gave me telekinetic tears and a shit ton of range ups, I didn't even bother playing the run. I can understand that. Like, uh, I got Tiny Planet on him, and it. Tiny Planet. See, that's him. good. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> I was just like, whoa. Now, if you can get telekinetic tears, it'll, like, make your fucking Tiny Planet shit all wobby wobby. Yeah, no, like, uh, I actually did get, uh,. Like the the book that gives you it the, mm. the telekinetic whatever bullshit, but that's when I was trying to get Samson so I couldn't take damage and it was working really well. Like I was at the end of the fucking the floor, I was fighting the boss and it was a widow. I, I'm like I let my fucking thing go. I'm charging up the next one and just get jumped on and I'm just like, <sighs> I, I couldn't. Are move. you gonna get your setup ready for spell table anytime soon? I uh, still need webcam, but that's still... There's still a lot of things I need to get, and I've been focusing on so much. Well, you can play untap. You don't need a camera for that. That's just straight up... That's a software that we play on. Yeah. No, I am about to say, I've gotten a schedule down to be able to play games and work efficiently ish <laughs> it's not 
I mean, it is fun. Don't get me wrong. See, the only thing with Untapped is you can go on to another website that gives you uh, EDH deck lists, and you can go to a deck list, be like, hey, I like this deck. So then you copy the fucking URL, you go to Untapped, you go to create a deck, you go into import deck, you copy the, you paste the URL in it, and bam, you got a deck. That sounds pretty. I. I like building my decks, so that to me just. Then build your deck. <laughs> you don't have to do that. You yeah, can build it. The one thing you're talking about is time, and if you don't want to waste time, you can import a deck. Yeah, it's just. There's a lot to understand to it. I like playing with people. Like, now you're taking away the cards and everything, too. Like, I'm not... Well, you don't play with us in the first place. I, because you're not here. And I'm busy. I have to do shit. I'm sorry. That's like, I'm not, not what I meant. I know, but, like, I would play more if I didn't have to sleep and fucking oh, work and all the shit. Like, I have a lot of shit I need to do. And I would love to play with you guys. I would love to. I never said you didn't. Uh, you just said you don't. I don't want to play with you guys. I didn't say you didn't want to. I just said you don't. Yeah, but I don't play with anybody anymore. I've been focusing on other things. All I'm doing, Chris, is trying to give you an option so you can play with us. I'm just giving it to you. You could take the option or not. I'm not trying to give you shit. I know, and I'm just trying to say, like, it's, it's cool, and I think it's genuinely a cool thing. Like, it's not like I'm like, oh, it's, it's fuck that shit, no. I, I, I actually think it's pretty cool. It's just, I don't... I'm weird when it comes to magic. I'm so used to it being me, you, and everybody being able to just sit down with our decks and just sit there and play and do that. And don't need any... No, like camera don't need anything else you know it, yeah it, but anytime we play together everyone gets pissed off because nobody actually says what the power level of their decks is so people are playing completely different powered level decks and we're just sitting here like damn we shouldn't be playing these decks together at all i, I still have fun so that to me is <laughs> i'm just saying that because the last time we played it didn't really seem like everybody else was having fun i'm just like damn i'm just trying to play my deck I was having fun playing against your deck, you know, targeting your shit. Because I was just like, I know how to make this game go pretty damn funny. And also, nobody else is trying to target yeah. you either. I feel like if I was to jump in the mix, it'd be fun. Because <laughs> I still have all, I like, so when Ryan and I broke up, he never took his cards, so I have all his cards. I have all my cards from before. I have cards that I've also have like recently bought and added into like the collection. So I feel like we could all have a lot of fun and dick around. Well, you could play on spell table with us. I, I don't know have a computer. Ball, but we could all play together. Oh, oh, you don't even need a webcam, you just need a phone. Hmm. Something to look into. But I understand Chris's side with, like, being in person and stuff and all that. Well, I that's struggle. almost impossible with COVID and everybody moving out of Norwich. So we can't really adhere, we can't adhere to that. True. Well, yeah, I'm... I, it's not like I'm not gonna not play the game. It's just I have other things I want to do. Like I love the game and all, but it's not. I, I don't even want. That's fine. I'm just trying to let you know that you can play it with us when we're trying to play it. Yeah, I know. I understand you don't want to play it all the time, but we generally do play it all the time. So if you want to interact with us in any way, that's usually what we're doing. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not trying to tell you to drop whatever you're doing, do this and that. I'm just telling you, if you do want to play with us, you do want to interact with us, that's how to do it. Oh, yeah. But, like, I feel like I just want to, like, me and Max, we sit here and we do whatever we do and we just, we chat. I want to be able to do that with you and Shane. Like, I want to be able to yeah, do what I'm this doing. This is the one day I've ever been able to do that because I work a complete different schedule than you. 
Oh, yeah. That's almost impossible. Same with Shane. Like, I'm saying, like, whenever you guys are maybe up doing whatever, I I don't... I just want to talk, you know? Like, it, I don't... It's not like I don't want to play with you guys. Like, I just want to talk with you guys. If I'm already doing something, it's not like I'm trying to, like, be like, ugh, I don't want to talk to them or, you know, interact with them. Like, I'd, I'd love to have you here just chatting with you while I'm doing whatever. Because I would just make doing this shit so much more fun because I'm, I'm just I'm not trying to like ignore people you know it's like I'm just trying to do what I'm trying to do and I would love to like be able to you know just have you like on a call and everything like that but like, yeah it's not it's not easy <laughs> with work schedules and shit no I do get that Chris, Chris, I'm telling you, I understand that. All I'm telling you is if you want to play stuff with us, that's what I've been saying. I understand you do your own stuff. I understand you do streaming, you do videos and whatnot. Like, I could see that. All I'm telling you is if you do want to play something with us, if, I'm not saying you have to. No, oh, yeah. I'm just, I'm just telling you how you can. So, like, if you do want to make a deck on Untap, you could be like, hey, guys, I have a deck on Untap. We'll be like, oh, shit, let's play. Yeah, it's, like, like, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm not going to do it. It's just I, I'm going to get around to it. Like, I'm, it's in the back of my mind. Like, it's there. That's fine. Chris, I am a person that will constantly keep bringing stuff up, constantly be reminding people of stuff until it's annoying, until they do it, purely because that's how I am. No, I'm I... not telling you to do it as soon as possible. I'm not telling you to do that at all. I just want you to do it in general. No, I, trust me. It, it, <laughs> this isn't like any sort of thing of me being like a, a douche, but like I, I know that's how you are. I've kind of I've I've known you for a few years. Yeah, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I I know how you operate. It's not like me being like, yeah, that's annoying. No, I, I enjoy it because it keeps me fucking. You know, I can't forget about it if you don't let me. And it's not a bad thing. And I know how I am. If I don't get reminded multiple times, I'll just for fucking I'll blatantly forget what the hell me and that person talked about. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying too. Like that's how I am too. My brain sucks. Like it took me weeks to get Overwatch because my dad's like, "You download Overwatch?" I'm like, "Fuck, I meant to." That literally me too. Like you kept saying like, "Hey, dude." Did you get Overwatch? I'm like, oh yeah, I'll get it. <laughs> I finally got it. Not, I'm gonna say not too long ago, I think. I don't remember. We played it together. Yeah, I know we played it together. I just don't rem My aspect of time has been so fucked lately. Like, I thought something happened like a few days ago, and it was like yesterday. And, it, yeah. It's not good. So no one can figure out my hair color, Chris. Oh, I still haven't even looked at that. Oh yeah, because I was gonna send you a picture of it when it was dry, and then I just mm -hmm. completely forgot. Fitting, fitting for the conversation. <laughs> and not to mention, I want to play Untap with you with the um, heads I win shield lose deck because we played a lot of money and we waited almost two years for that shit. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, we've been waiting a while for that. So I just want to be in a match with you while I'm using it, you know what I mean? Oh well, yeah, I'd, I'd love to like see how it goes. <laughs> the only change I'm going to be making to it is adding a mana crypt. Purely because, yes it is a mana crypt, it's a zero mana rock that does the fucking two mana thing. But, it makes me flip coins. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute. I didn't think about that. And I could throw in more mana rocks in it and whatnot, but honestly, the mana in it is pretty much perfect. <laughs> also, zero curling in all of the foils. We love that. Yeah, you'd love to see that. Like, for example, I got Dominaria fucking... Not Dominaria, I got Brothers War. Some of that shit, like the bulk commons and uncommons, that shit's curled. 
but I opened up the fucking deck, left it out for a little bit um, while I was looking at other cards. Didn't even curl a little bit. Not even trying to. Hmm. It's literally like a fucking playing card deck, like something you would play fucking cards with. That's actually kind of interesting. Oh, and they gave eight art cards of the fucking uh, commanders, so you could flip those over and they're the thickness of the art cards. Hmm. So you can keep your commanders just in some really nice hardcovers, and you don't even have to use them. You could just set them aside, being like, yep, these are going to be expensive one day. One day. I need one more fucking penny, and I'm upset. <clears throat> Two more and never mind. I accidentally hit the reroll machine. So all of the reprint cards that aren't that don't have new art all have the uh you know how you buy a set box and they have like the set list, like the yeah. fucking planeswalker symbol in the corner? Mm -hmm. So absolutely all of them have that. Hello. Um but the thing is, is, half of them are foil. And I know for a fact you can't get set list cards in foil. Yes? Yeah, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a foil set list card. I do agree with that one. Oh, I have so much range now. Are you able to put your mic closer to your face at all, Chris? Like, you're really quiet. I don't even know how I'm quiet. I think it like I move a lot. So this is this is me like right in front of my mic. Like I am like I'm outwardly talking in front of it. But like um it's a lot clearer. I can hear you now. Yeah, but like I usually actually have it at um like my you know how like on stream like you can like alter it and like you know put it up to like decibels or whatever. Like mm -hmm. I have it like mm -hmm. up to like past one like i have like at like 1.2 1.3 on it nice i need to test something and just to point something out just so you guys know how accessible spell table is the very first match i ever played on it there was a motherfucker on his xbox one hooking up his motherfucking phone to it using his goddamn controller <laughs> to pass the turns that's how accessible it is yo that's I'm fucking serious. lit that's fucking lit yo cuz i have my x cuz i have my xbox and like i can hook <laughs> oh my if God. i have my xbox hooked up right now and i have my headset in i get i can take my discord party straight onto my xbox that's why I keep saying, you don't need a webcam. You really don't. Oh, you don't. yeah. That guy it to me. <laughs> uh, there is, like, one little, like, different issue, though. Like, I know, like, yeah, you can have access to all the cards, but, like, everybody does. So, like, I know, I know, like, I have access to it, and they have access to it, but, like, god, if I start seeing, like, Mox Diamonds and Mox fucking Opals all the You're time... Not what do you mean? Those are banned in Commander. Oh, the shit. only thing that's not banned is Mox Diamond. And Mox Diamond's like a $600 card, and th that's in CDH. As soon as you, you have that person pop up in the game, you're gonna be like, yo, what the fuck are you doing here? Get the fuck out. It's like, three sure. people three people berating one person, that person's gonna leave. Yeah. Like, if because... nothing's gonna go forward and they're just gonna continue being an asshole, you could just recreate a lobby and make a private lobby and re-add everybody. So yeah, I'll, I'll give it a look one of these days when I have a lot of time. I do have a lot of time coming off uh, this week. You have an Android phone, so just look up a fucking spell table video and just look up, uh, I think it's like droid cam or something. No, I, you just I have, have to, it uh... still. No, I still have it. Oh, okay. But, like, oh that's for spell table. Like, I'm talking about, like, the other one. Like, that one. Oh, be... for untap? So, the yeah. thing about untap is it grades your decks by gold level. So, like, um, it has, like, points. Yeah, There's a point system. Really, really good decks get up to, like, 8,000 points or something. My decks are sitting around, like, 1,600. I'm sitting around, like, 8 power level. I'm trying to be fucking, like, fair magic, but I'm powerful magic. You know, I get that. 
I don't know what my commander deck power level is at. It's kind of filthy. Well, well kind of, how many tutors? <laughs> how many? Well, the thing is, I how I look at it I is... I have not looked at it in a minute. <laughs> like, how I, many got ways? It was, I got it when I was in Tennessee, and Ryan and I were playing with people in Tennessee. And oh, my deck just, like, the, the commander deck just kept destroying everybody. So I feel like either A... Like, I bought it as a pre-built, but I took some things out and, like, switched some things around. But I kept it all within, like, the water sea monster theme. Um. But, like, either the way I kind of rebuilt it was just way too filthy, or they were just really shitty at building their decks. <laughs> it's it was probably like, that. Well, Commander decks are hard to build. Like... Well, I wasn't even, like, we weren't even playing with commander rules. Mm -hmm. So, like, I was, ta like, I was still taking the commander out, and I, and, like, I was, but I was just running the deck as, like, just normal, just, like, a normal deck as I would, and just, either they were just not good at, not as good as building decks as they said they were, or it's just way too overpowered. I don't know, but... Well the thing is, um, all commander decks really lie in how well does every card in your 99 or your 98 go with your commander. Because mm -hmm. if they do the slightest bit of synergization, you're already leagues and aheads than most commander players at LGS. Mm -hmm. Most people uh -huh. that build a commander deck are like, oh, this is cool. Oh, this is cool. Oh, this is cool. Oh, this is cool. And then they don't really think of how they'll work together at all. How they're going to get to the point like, of a win. Having, the, having it as a, like, I bought it as a pre-built, like, seeing it that way, like, helped a lot with seeing how commander decks are built. So that was yes. cool. That's how I feel about the heads I win, tails you lose pre-con deck. Because I'm looking through it, I'm like, this is literally all about flipping coins or, like, something to help my commanders do something faster. Yeah. Or do something more. Like, it was, it, it's amazing. I love it. And it, it kind of puts into perspective how I should be building my decks. Mm -hmm. And it makes me sad because my, uh, my favorite deck, my Londo deck, that thing was so optimized at one point, but I kept trying to change it, kept trying to make it better, but in all reality, I was making it worse. Mm hmm Yeah, I remember you were constantly messing with that deck. You would come over and we would sit we would all be sitting there hanging out and you're like, I'm gonna tear apart this deck. <laughs> and it's like Oh but, yeah. But it's already I filthy. do have a bad habit of it. But it's already filthy. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I have such a bad habit of just tearing apart decks and then rebuilding other ones and then rebuilding the same one later on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there. I've gotten better about it to the point where I'm just like, okay, I know the sets that are coming out, and I know future cards can make it so I can build this a little bit more optimized. So there, there are a few decks I took apart, like my uh, my Commander Blue Blue Black Mill deck. Um, I took that apart. I will be putting it back together very soon, though, because I just got a lot of cards for Mill. And holy shit! Holy shit! <laughs> I'm gonna cough up the lung. Mm. Widow! I fucking hate you right now! Ah! <laughs> oh, shit. <clears throat> so my mom and I were talking about some, like, pretty cool shit, because, like, I'm still very dead set on like saving up and like getting my own plot of land to start my horse barn and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> she was asking me about my boyfriend, Matt. Yeah.
or about him and like what he wants to do and like how he feels about what I want to do and stuff and I was just like well he's like full down supporting and shit and I was telling her about like what Matt kind of want to do wanted to do on the side along with my horse farm like because I already know I'm already gonna like have a regular like day job in order to afford like basic shit that I do need and like also pay bills while I'm getting it started yeah, she's like obviously she's like well what's your whole plan with it and I'm just like well obviously I want to have my brood mares and my foals like I want to do that I want to do the thoroughbred sales I want to do all that shit I also want to open it up to riding borders and like have lessons for people because there's like even though people saying it's a dying sport and a dying atmosphere it's actually very still much so alive due to social media and stuff hear me out eventually we're gonna have to do away with cars and the next thing we're gonna go to are horses long yeah, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna revert back to riding horses everywhere we're gonna revert back going amish like electric like we're gonna get to the point of where we're gonna have to conserve electricity strictly for houses because we're using so much of it and causing so much resources to die off because of it that we're gonna have to resort back to the old west ways of getting around with horse buggy bicycles shit like that it's gonna be like that yeah but no, with, with that <laughs> um like i want to have my barn open up to like all levels of riding i want to have like i know like long term shit like this takes like it's gonna take a while to do but like i want to have all levels of riding i want people like eligible going to competition for my barn i want like my own horse races going to race like have my own uh stud operation but i know what matt also wants to do is very off guard very not me but he's a stupid religious guy which is like two each is their own how did you wind he up with somebody like that okay but he's not the type of person where he'll shove it down my throat like this entire Does time that he's become a pastor? yeah he wants to be a youth pastor hear me out he could be a youth pastor or he can become a revenant, own a church down there, and you guys could really start raking in the cash. Him owning a church, and then he could start getting those youth programs to your fucking whole ranch and whatnot, and literally get all their parents to send money for fucking field trips my and shit every year. <laughs> my mom literally said the same shit. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, literally, I. your mom's awesome. But also, <laughs> but also, she was just like, but you could also, like, with doing all those programs and stuff, you can have the parents come, like, stay and visit and turn it into a bed and breakfast. And I was like, Matt's already on that idea, Mom. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's such a good idea. Like, shitty, like... It's crazy how, like, on, like, on cue Matt is with everything, because, like, he's, even though he knows nothing about it, and, like, he doesn't like the smell of farms, uh, like, I told him, I'm just like, you can have a farm and have it smell clean as fuck. Horse farms have to smell clean. Like, we, like, you go up, like, Elaine's over in Plymouth, you go there, that's a full broodmare operation. It smells like fresh flowers year round because of the amount of greenery and plant life that is there that Elaine has brought in from herself. Like, there's so much there. Like, ugh. Like, my mom knows I plan on having like gardens and greenhouses and shit like that. Like, my own, like, I plan on having like, even though I hate chickens, I'm gonna have like chickens. my own like fenced off area. That is strictly just the chickens. And you're gonna have but to hire people. Like, to oh yeah, that's, that's that's long run stuff. Is like hiring wonder, people and stuff. What I'm wondering is, what part of the U.S. are you gonna be doing it in? Um. Well, right now, 
Finger Lake, like up here in New York, the like racing, thoroughbred racing is still really good. This the whole northern East Coast is still really good. Like here, Maryland, um, oh, yeah. Long Island, Finger Lakes, Canada. Like actually, but I wouldn't really send my horses up to Canada. I don't trust Canada. Hey, I would do like personally. I would do Midwestern fucking Maryland. Um, yeah. So you so you're away from all of the like hurricanes and whatnot, and so they yeah, have a lot of space. See, I would do like I also want to be in New York though. Like I want to be like at least nearby here because I know my mom will want to come see the place and like my parents will want to come visit and stuff because I do mm -hmm. plan on taking at least two to three horses from my house to wherever I go <laughs> yeah okay never mind then and so and plus I know like with Elaine being up here and like if I can get the farm within a few years before she stops doing everything she said she can easily get me horses. Like, she'll easily send me her horses. She'll send me her clients. Like, she will take care of that. Hmm. So, like... It's just a, a lot of it's all about timing and... Just compiling the money, finding the right place, and going from there. My plan is to, um keep working for a few years save up a lot get an apartment fucking keep saving um save up the money for a car and then from there i'm gonna then go to a trade school and then mm -hmm. drop money into that to learn how to weld and then welding and diesel mechanics are real is like really good right now mm-hmm so I'm going to be like, learning a bunch of shit. I'm not going to be doing just welding. I'm going to be doing everything mechanical like, that goes into welding and whatnot. I can, and I, then... can tell you, I can tell you right now, if you were to go to UTI in Pennsylvania, that's where my ex Brandon went when we when we got out of high school. It's a really good school. It is a really I'm good Rochester school. Like... Right now. So this, there's schools all around me. Like there's high grade colleges. There's high grade trade schools like i can go isn't to it, there's... isn't it right over the other side of the lake is hobart mm -hmm. hobart welding i believe so yeah yeah that's ohio i think my friend james in ohio is working at, at the power one of the power plants nice yeah so what my plan is i'm not going to be staying in new york after i learn all these skills after i get all of these registrations and whatnot i'm going to oh, yeah. hightail it all the way up to alaska and I'm going to go onto an oil rig. And I'm going to spend at least five years on said oil rig. Oh, yeah. That's then, bad money. What's up? That's insane money. That is absolutely mm -hmm. insane money. Like, just yeah. working those five years, you could easily retire. I'm not planning on retiring. I plan on coming back, investing, and then going to Hollywood and then writing music. Well, after, before I do all that, I want to go to Juilliard and roll into there and become a, uh, get my doctorate in musical composition and mm -hmm. then go to Hollywood and then just start writing fucking musical composition art for fucking Hollywood movies, TV shows. I could go uh, transfer to uh, New York uh, over plane so I could do Broadway musicals and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Have my own fucking traveling orchestra making me money. You could come play at my bed and breakfast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Do you understand how much money would like, come into that if just a big ass orchestra that is world renowned came into there just to fucking play for your bread and breakfast? Well, well, like the whole thing is, is like, like with the bed and breakfast type deal, Matt also wants to open it up. So like, he wants. I don't know if I would have it there, but he plans on having like a restaurant type deal somewhere at some point, where it's not like. You come in and there's wait staff and there's all that. It it would be basically ran by me and him. It'd be like a dinner service. Like you pay a fee every like you get a certain amount of courses. You get drink like a free drink with it. And then like there's open bar. Like you get come in. You have a set 
that eat time. And if you want to stay later, there's an open bar with like small food, small snacks that we can quickly put together to serve at the bar. And that'd be super dope. Have like you guys just come in on one of the dinner nights and be like, you dinner and a show tonight, everybody. Literally. Mm -hmm. And that would just bring guests, like, following the fucking orchestra. Yeah. And then it's like, if anybody needs to stay the night, we also have a bedded breakfast a couple miles down the road. We're more than welcome to help chauffeur across. Hope you guys don't mind standing in a horse trailer. <laughs> if you're too drunk to drive. <laughs> <laughs> That's the easiest way to move a lot of people. And trust me, the horse trailer is comfy and padded. There's a ramp and all. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's my plan. I just want to write music later on in life and try to affect some people's lives. Oh, yeah. And during all of that, I'm going to be doing a bunch of small stuff, streaming. I'm writing a comic book series. I told Chris about it. Like, that shit is in depth so far. My friend Dylan and I want to do a, do a manga that is like... Alright, so you know how like whenever there's like an old western like trigun like those types of animes like it's old western they always have like it's always mech there's always some sort of mech element there's no like actual like we have a true pirate like yeah sure there's like magic and shit in one piece but it's a true pirate anime why can't we get a true western anime so my friend Dilly came up with this dope ass idea. Hold up. I got it. I got it right here. We have a whole group chat about it. We call it we call it 21. There's hold up. Let me scroll up. So where it's a purely western comic. It's called 21 following our hero Blackjack the Killer, aka Jackson Wells, who's a convicted killer. Uh he's Convicted for killing 21 men of his small town of Odsen. But the like the whole thing is is he didn't actually kill the 21 people. He just got caught for the murder of his brother that killed the 21 people. <laughs> so like it's a whole like flip flop so, of the story. But like it's, it's like, all just, like you wanna do like all like we want to do all true old western like like we're gonna have like different people like they're gonna be named after like a lot of like vegas old poker games and like shit like that like it's go like we want to make it like a true like gun like true guns fucking horse actual horses not fucking spaceships and shit like not yeah, like dune on buggies like, and shit like that, like, you know, and... landsliders and shit like that. You know, sh shit that's, like, super, yeah. like, cool and futuristic -y kind of, but, like, not super duper futuristic. Yeah, now, like, we want... want to add some, like, m like more, like, mystical elements, kind of like how One Piece does it. Like, they throw in some, like, mech and mystical elements, but they don't go, like, full bore yeah, with like it. A, a dash is that do bad. it so they get it from the Native Americans. And then yeah. they turn on the Native Americans bro going into the reservations later in the future. Yes. Yeah. Boom. That's so good. I would read that. I would read that. That would be pretty good. Like, we want to do that. Like, we're, we're getting, like, a group of people together, like, to start getting it together. Because a lot of... When Dylan was in college, he met a lot of good artists. And, like, his his girlfriend's, like, really good... Like, starting to get really good into the anime like drawing anime style and like she's really good with like colors and art and like shading anyway and like dylan and i we just go ham when it comes to telling stories like we get really animated into it like animated and everything but i told dylan i was like we can't write everything down we have to have it all on voice recording because like mm -hmm. no one can keep up with us to write down that quickly see i wrote down all of my stuff um i'll actually just start reading it off once i go downstairs I have so essentially the first series I want to write of it. It's a I'm not sure if I want to. So as I said, I want to go into Hollywood with this stuff, but mm -hmm. I don't know if I want it to be established as my own comic book series first, or like a U YouTube or like fucking Patreon series or something. Um, so essentially the first one's going to be called Voodoo Butterfly, 
um, Voodoo and Butterfly being two different people. Uh, Voodoo is a um, mixed girl who is very, very fucked up along with uh, Butterfly. Uh, Butterfly is a very large, buff Korean dude. They both went through very large trial and tribulations later in uh, early in life uh -huh. uh, when they broke out of a trafficking ring. Mm -hmm. In that trafficking ring, uh, the children they were being tra trafficked with were being shipped <laughs> off to the Middle East to be used as uh, child soldiers. No shit. But Butterfly, um, he, the reason why his name is Butterfly is not because he has the powers of a butterfly, but it's because he encapsulates the Chaos Force. Or the chaos theory, where the flap of a butterfly's wings causes a hurricane or an earthquake on the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. So, he spoke some words, and a lot of people died around him, except for Voodoo. And he caused a lot of things to happen around the world because of that. I'm still trying to figure out what he caused, because I'm trying to get the whole grand scope of what I want the world to come well, to, essentially, in that. Well, mm -hmm. do, do, do you want, like, uh, an idea or something that I just thought of when you said that? It's just like, um, well, do you want an idea or no? <laughs> sure. Uh, no, I was thinking, like, um, depending on the time that it is, you could probably tie in some actual, like, relatable things of, like, some natural disasters that happened certain times in the world, depending on when they happened or when you're basing this off of. So, like, say, like, you know... Ah, oh, fuck. Um, you know, like, I don't even know. Maybe maybe he's the start of the cause of, like, the Dust Bowl in, like, Arizona. You know? I could make it so it happened in the 1900s, and it caused everything that happened throughout the um, 20th century. Yeah. Because what my, what my idea is, is he's gonna, in the first issue, you find out that he's fucking dead. Just straight up. Like, the first issue is you walking into his, like archrium where he's like just kind of surrounded by butterflies because that is what he um relates with the most so he's just kind of like caretaking Ooh. multiple thousands of different species of butterflies and you go into a room and he's just dead millions of butterflies around him dead as well and he has the whole holy bible like the original holy bible like shit that was thought that was lost from thousands and thousands of years tattooed in Hebrew into his body. Huh. And, um, yeah. So, yeah, that having him in the 1900s would definitely work a lot better because everything could start unfolding through that. Yeah, I was say, because, like, I just thought about that because, like, it causes something immediate in front of him, but it could also cause something else in, like, the other part. Well, that's what I was trying to figure out what... I want it to happen, but you saying that helps so much because I was trying to figure out what else happened. I, I I knew everyone else was around him was gonna die except for Voodoo. I just didn't know what else I wanted to happen. Yeah, because I I was just like throwing something out there for you. That actually makes it a lot better. Ooh, I got a key. Because now I could just make whole other characters for the future. That's awesome. Fuck yeah. Because I already have character. I already. Okay. So there isn't much to say about Voodoo and Butterfly. There really isn't much. Um, there's just a lot to read about them eventually. They're going to be great characters. It's just I can't really say much about them because they're some of the most important characters in the sh in the whole thing. And I don't want to spoil it to you guys because I know it's going to be good. I can't wait. But the one I'm excited to tell you about, Max, is uh, Merlin and King Arthur. Um, mm -hmm. The first issue you see Merlin in, you're going to be seeing him be Sherlock Holmes. Um, nobody knows who he actually is. Like Nobody knows that he's actually Merlin, the fucking Grand Inquisitor of the fucking Round Table. Um, oh. 
He's just literally someone that's immortal that is trying to do good in the world and still stay relevant without having people question who he is. So he took the persona of Sherlock Holmes because uh, he was close friends with Sir Conan Doyle and Sir Conan Doyle, kind of like what we're doing here, uh, gave him the whole like spiel of Sherlock Holmes. He's like, uh, well, I'm going to make it so Sir Conan Doyle is the only person that knows who Merlin is. <laughs> it's going to be funny because Sir Conan Doyle's like famous to be a drunk and whatnot. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> um, I already have some like quips that they say to each other uh, written down somewhere. Um, but he's going to take the persona of Sherlock Holmes, be the detective and try to help. And Jack the Ripper is going to be like active in London at that time. Ooh. Wait. One second. So I was looking at the like some of the worst events in the 1900s, and uh. <laughs> Sorry. Just almost died. Yeah. So I was just like, uh. Oh. A little chilly out today. Yeah, it is. It is a little bit. Yeah. Uh, one of the one of the things that popped up is 1907 coal mine explodes in Magona, West Virginia, killing at least 361 people. Worst industrial accident in. American history. Jesus Christ. That's rough. It's only giving me US. Uh... I say we we need we need everything. <laughs> You know, I was hoping it was just gonna... Uh, disasters. There we go. Natural disasters. Um, powerful hurricane hits Texas. Magnitude 7.5 earthquake. Warhawks, Guatemala, killing 2,000. Uh... A volcano erupts, destroying a town, killing Okay, I think. Black and fucking purple, and flash. Christmas time comes around, and green blue. You know, cool, yeah. Those are natural disasters. We're not natural disasters. Oh my god! Oh my god! Get a whole line of Los Santos just all the way to fuck cross, trip over an elf. A lot of these are U.S., which is sad. Dude, that's pretty cool. Um, I mean, if they don't have that, we should make that. That's money right there. Assassinations and attempts? Ooh. Hey, Elon. Oh, hey, Elon. Huh. Elon. Um, oh, my God. I'm... Oh, my. Oh, my. Uh, there's quite a few wars that happened. Quite the Philippine, wars. uh, the Philippine American War, the Second Boer War, the Thousand Days War, the Anglo-Somali War, the Kuwaiti Rashidi War, the Saudi Rashidi War, the Russo-Japanese War, the Honduran Nicaraguan War, the Scramble for Africa, the Orange Free State, South African Republic. Jesus, <laughs> how many wars have happened in this fucking world? A lot. What the hell? A lot, then, bro. Like I, I like, knew, like uh, talk, I knew I more. Talk about genocides. Like, tell him no, about so, the genocides that have happened. Like I know, like a lot of stuff years. happened, but I didn't realize there was that many no, wars. So, like, I looked all, up, like super I looked small up, or something. I looked up 19, uh, the nineteen 
hundreds worst events <laughs> world worst events um well if you just want natural disasters there's a few that have killed like a decent amount of people um and then non-natural disasters, there's there's quite a few, but mainly them a lot of them are in the US. Well, I, I mean most of the natural disasters have been happening for thousands and thousands of years. I mean No, if that's non-natural disasters. The natural uh yeah. natural disasters, we've got one in the US. Two two. Uh, two, actually. Two in the US. And that's the September 8th, 19, uh, 1900, a powerful hurricane hit Galveston, Texas, U.S., killing 8,000. And then um, April 18th, 1906, the San Francisco earthquake, the estimated magnitude was 7.8 on the San Andreas Fault, destroys much of San Francisco, killing at least 3,000 with two... 225,000 to 300,000 left homeless and 30, 350 million in damages. Damn. Damn. <laughs> See, there's so much I can put into this book. Or comic but, series. I got Tiny but, Planet. But, We're uh, fucking going. Oh my god. Finally. <laughs> two. Three. Four. Five, six, that. seven. There's seven on the non-natural disasters that are all U.S. <laughs> and there's yeah. only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nine. <laughs> there's only eleven on the list. <laughs> so, okay, let me let me tell you about Jack the Ripper. Um, so Sherlock Holmes, a.k.a. Merlin, is fig finding, um, with the police, uh, dead prostitutes around London, trying to figure out what the fuck is going on, who is this mad madman trying to, like, trying to do all this shit, or actually doing all this shit. So, he's, um, going through the dark alleyways of London alone, and he stumbles across Jack the Ripper doing his thing. Um, his murderous thing comes around the corner and he sees that it's his long lost king, King Arthur, missing an eye with a decrepit tongue around his t around his neck. Well, he's not missing an eye. It's more of it's not his eye that's in his right eye socket. And he has a shriveled up tongue around his neck. And he has a shattered Excalibur that is completely black in his right hand, plunging it into the chest of a, um, of a poor woman in the middle of the night. And that's just going to spiral into a flashback. Like, what? Oh. Me. I'm gone. What's up? Like, it's, it's like, what's good? And then... I'm not trying to follow what stop doing that it's basically like what's good and then flashback <laughs> well it's gonna be more of him seeing this like Arthur doesn't see Merlin but Merlin mm -hmm. sees him and he's like horrified and him seeing that is gonna end the chapter and it's go uh, or the issue depending on like how I'm gonna do it and then it's gonna go into a flashback in the nice. next issue slash chapter and then when it comes back it'll come back to arthur slash jack the ripper seeing merlin and them talking in present time hmm. or there's going to be a few issues slash chapters in the flashback like there's a lot that happens on both merlin's and Arthur's side. I don't really know what's going to happen to Merlin yet. I know what happens to Arthur. I'm 
so I got Tiny Planet with Azazel again. Now you just gotta get those telekinetic tears. Uh, I got Nine Inch Nails and Lard. <laughs> nice. I'm slow as fuck and I'm upset. I don't even know if I'm going the right way. Oh my god, it's got a baby. But what do you guys think of the sound of that so far? Uh, I, I already dope. told you my opinion on it. I mean, we talked about that the other day. What was that, Chris? I you were quiet. Oh, yeah, no, I, I keep moving. <laughs> uh, fucking, uh, no, uh, no, I remember talking about it the other day, so. I'll, I'll let Max have the have the floor here. I think it sounds dope. Like it's a really cool concept to be running with, like, and especially if you put it in the 1990s. Looking at like, just doing the little bit of research that I have, you have a lot that you can go with with the 90s, like. 90s. Oh, it's not even going to be just the 90s. It's going to be well, like. Yeah. I I my I'm dude. I'm so high. My brain just went with the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Like, they, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot that yeah. you can do with it with just, like, the 1900s, I meant. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's a solid, good concept. I kind of want to make it, so, with him having the whole, like, original Bible tattooed into him, it's going to seem really religious when I say that, and, like, when you first see it. But in all, re all reality, it's not. All yeah. that happened is... They did some of the most egregious human acts to the embodiment of the chaos force. Yeah. Yeah. Like that that's all it comes down to. Like they fucked up. And it's just gonna be a whole like clap back being like, no, your god did not cause this. Yeah, it's real and like with all the things that like it that I've like I looked at like through the night like just the early 1900s just from night like 1900 to 1909 like a lot of ha a lot happened there's a lot of bad events that seem to happen and like you could easily run with it easily no it's a very easily workable concept with a bunch of shit that you can do and, like the amount of information that's out there now is ridiculous yeah mm -hmm. Like, just looking at it, like, there was natural dis- like, there's- There's natural disasters, there was, like... Where, where the fuck was it? There was- There was a couple of different assassinations and assassination attempts. Ah, <laughs> uh, there was... The non-natural disasters and the natural disasters, like... That easily add up to killing thousands of people, especially mm -hmm. with this uh, with this Russian explosion to the Tunguska event, where uh, the river. Oh, uh, here we go. An airburst of a large meteoroid or common comet uh, flattened 2,000 kilometers, 770 square miles of forest. Oh. Yeah. It uh, apparently it's a it was a fragment and it hit uh, uh, at an altitude of, to five to ten kilometers, three to six miles above the Earth's surface. Or something like that. 1908. <laughs> Damn. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Same year in December, an earthquake and tsunami destroys Messina, Sicily, and Calabria, killing over 80,000 people. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of a lot of things happen. So but, I have a lot to work with. Yeah, like there's volcano eruptions, earthquakes, tsunamis, typhoons. 
You got the Great Lumber Fire of Ottawa Hall. It kills seven and leaves 15,000 homeless. Uh, the Scottfield Mine Disaster in Scottfield, Utah. It caused an explosion, killing at least 200 people. Jesus. Oh. Uh, the Hoboken Dock Fire. <laughs> Um, uh, the German passenger ship, Sale, Maine, Bremen, and Kaiser William de Gros, all owned by the North German Lloyd steamship line, catches fire at the docks in Hoboken, New Jersey. The fires began on the wharf and spread to the adjacent piers, warehouses, and small cra smaller craft, killing 326 people. And then just the Great Fire of 1901 that began begins in Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> and then another mine exploded. Another in mine exploded. Killing 112 people. <laughs> we gotta love history. <laughs> you gotta love history. You got a lot to work with, man. <laughs> yeah. Holy fucking shit. How did I get hit by that? That was nowhere near me. But I actually gotta hop off because I gotta get going on getting ready for work. Aw, oh, damn. Damn, skis. Yeah. yeah, I gotta go shower and find my clothes, put my clothes on. <laughs> damn, having to do normal people things. <laughs> Rough. <laughs> Well, I, I actually, well, well, actually, uh, you know how I was going to tell my manager, fuck you, I'm, mm -hmm. don't schedule me anymore. I had a little voice inside my head that was just like, mm, you should probably hold out just a little bit longer and, you know, just kind of bitch him out instead <laughs> and kind of scare him. And I could tell that he was scared because I walked in. <sighs> And my manager, Julia, was like, oh, hey, Max, how you doing? I was just like, where's John? <laughs> and I saw him duck around the corner. Where I was just he? like, you think I was just like, you ain't running from me. Get back over here, you grown ass man. <laughs> <laughs> and so I went after him <laughs> and he was just like, hey, Max, how's it going? Didn't say anything other than I need to talk to you before you leave. And I walked away, started doing my job. He was busy doing shit, respectively. So obviously it's, it's just like, I'll just wait until he's 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 ready to talk to me. And uh <laughs> I'll just wait. So we walk into the office and my manager Kim comes and I'm super comfortable with my manager Kim. She's great. And uh straight up I just look at him and I'm just like, what's going on in to go? Like, I see all these new people. I see a lot of stuff on the schedule changing. What's going on? Like, what? I don't understand. I just want to know what's going on so I can plan accordingly. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm just like, because I can't keep working just three shifts, John. I can't afford to pay my bills. Half of the cash that I make here goes in my gas tank. I also have my car I need to fix. I'm just barely staying afloat right now. Like, what the hell? And he's like, I can work on getting you more shifts. I didn't want to interfere with the farm or anything. I was just like, where are you getting the farm from? I've told, I told you a month ago that I was done with the farm. I've been done with it for a good month and a half. Like, what the hell? John. And he's like, oh, well, I've been hearing from other people that you've been still working on the farm. I'm like, well, I'm not. It'd be better if you would come talk to me about that instead of just assuming from other people. Like, mm -hmm. you're hurting me. You're hurting... Like, I will come in whenever the hell you need me to up until 9.30 at night. Then I have to genuinely leave because the plows stop. Like... Hello. Yeah. And... He was just like, alright, well, we're training, cross-training people over there because I need closers. And I need people that... Like, I just need to make sure that we have rotation people for the winter. I need to make sure that we're stocked with people with how many people that have left. I was like, that's fine. I respect that. That's great. I We all appreciate that. But 
I can't keep living on three days a sh three days a week. It's not worth it for me. Like it's really not. And so unless I get up to hours, I don't know what to tell you. I'm like, I'm gonna have to leave. And he's like, okay, well, well, what's your availability right now? I'm like, I can do whatever shift up until 930. I can't close, but I can do literally any other shift. You want me to train? I can train. You want me to open? I can open. You want me to run deliveries? You have my paperwork. I signed paperwork because I had to go to Clay and DeWitt for you to get those soup bowls. Like, like Kim asked and I was like, yeah. And so we like, you have my driver paperwork. I can do deliveries. You just need to show me what to do. Like and do everything in the restaurant. I just don't know when I get there. And he's like, oh, well, yeah, that's great. Then I ha that adds on more work, like gives you three extra hours worth of work with deliveries. I was like, yeah, that's fine. That's great. Three, three extra hours of work, of paid work. And I don't have to share the tips with anybody. Fuck yeah. I'll take that. Easy. That's extra money for me. That's extra hours for me. Like, and he was like, I'll do what I can to get you more shifts, but right now we have a lot of things going on and December's gonna be crazy. And I was just like, I know December's gonna be crazy. You guys are gonna be going up to Clay to help Alyssa's store. And he gave me the gave me a face of like, what what do you mean, you know? I'm like, I'm not dumb, John. I get told things, like me and her are still friends. Like I'm not gonna say too much because I don't wanna get her in trouble, but like I know what's going on up there. Like, I'm aware, like, I know you guys are gonna be going up there. All I can say is I hope you guys have a game plan for when you go up there, because it's a shit show. And then my manager, Kim, who knows that I'm best friends with Alyssa still, was just like, oh yeah, they're out of hot water up there, but their water heaters are blown. They're running on one manager, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, yeah, and they're running $200 drawers. And she's like, how'd you even know that? I was just like, I'm not dumb, Kim. I know what's going on. Like the only thing that I don't know what's going on is in my is our own department, which I'm just asking for more hours. Like I've been telling you for months since I got hired. I want more hours. Give me more hours. You don't give me the hours, and so I'm gonna sit here and not do the things that you ask of us. Like we're gonna be sitting here bullshitting on our phones, not doing anything, like not being busy. Like we're just gonna be doing the bare minimum unless you're helping us. You, but you're not helping us. So I'm hoping that maybe next week I'll have more shifts. They're hoping that they get a delivery this week so I can go and do the delivery training. Like I won't get paid tips for it, but I'll be paid the hourly for it. So that's something extra. Yeah, that's something better than but, nothing. But after, but after that one delivery with the delivery training, from there I'll be able to do deliveries by myself so I'll be able to make that tip money and like John usually has it set up so it's like the same day you're working so you'll go you'll do the delivery and then you'll take like a couple hour like either a half hour break or a couple hour break and then you'll be able to clock on for your shift I told John I was like I'll even do them on my days off because like that's just extra money on a day that I'm not working like that's still worth it to me it might just be three hours hourly, but like with the tip involved and like even just driving with the mileage, whether I get tipped or not, just driving the mileage, like that's an extra 20 bucks in my gas tank. Like it's better than nothing at this point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anything helps. And like, even if I get hired at another job, I'll tell them like, I get my like I don't I really don't want to leave Olive Garden if I don't have to because it is good extra tip money like it's good getting that extra cash to have it for any necessity that I need but like having a solid minimum wage hourly job where I'm not going to get reeked on, raped on taxes it would be even better <laughs> But that's what happened at my job yesterday, and from then on, it was smooth sailing. That's good. So, it's just waiting to see it be reflected in the schedule. Hopefully, now that they know, like, what they have been causing, that they're hopefully going to be yeah. like, Because, uh. like... 
My, I know my coworker Kate, Thursday, Friday, she's going back over to serving because she can make more money serving than she is in to go those two days. So either I'm picking it up or a, a person that I'm not really the most comfortable working with, but I'm gonna give it like a little, like maybe a week or so before I go to the managers about it and just tell them like it's personal reasons and it's not like, like I feel like they're gonna make it because like, so Marcus is gay mm -hmm. and he's black. And I feel like they're gonna make it one of those two things but it's not one of those two things. It's literally because he's... Please edit this out. <laughs> no, I, I will. <laughs> but... When... Like, before Matt and I got together... Matt... Like, Marcus was like, Yo, Matt, I'll give you $50 for you to send me a dick pic. <laughs> And he did it. <laughs> and I don't feel comfortable working with him knowing that he knows what my boyfriend's dick looks like. Oh my god! <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> that's weird. Oh my yes, god, but that's 50 bucks though, man. On my that's side, that's really bucks. bad. I know on Matt's side, that's like really questionable and oh, bad. Man. But like, I also know Matt like really well at this point. <laughs> That I know he purely did it because he's like, yo, fifty dollars is fifty dollars, and he just wants to see my dick. Okay, it's not like he's asking to suck it or touch it. He just wants a picture. Yeah. Which, which I get. Like, yeah, go for it. Make that, make that little big, that little bag. Like, go for it. That's fifty bucks. Fuck yeah, I'd get do that bag, too. Bro. So, like, I like if I was single and someone was like, yo, hundred bucks for a titty pic, I'd be like, I ain't got nothing, but here you go. I got mosquito Here's a picture of a, a fucking cutting <laughs> board. I'm as yeah, I'm as flat as a fucking cardboard box, but like, pay me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you asked for it. Like you asked, and I I'm delivering. Here you go. So like, I understand. Like, so that's fine. But like, I don't like. I can't. I don't. I like. It's so awkward working with him. I can like, understand that. I'm gonna sit in there. I'm just like, don't ask me about Matt. Don't ask me about Matt. Don't ask me about Matt. <laughs> you know, just be like, um, no. I can imagine. <laughs> you just walk up in there. He's just like, did he shave? Oh my god. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> that was so bad. Uh, but like, that's that's why I'm like not comfortable working with him in to go, but he's gonna be working in to go. So I'm just gonna have to suck it up and deal, bro. Peace be with you. <laughs> I'm gonna need it. <laughs> or as he would say, penis be with you.
<laughs> Sorry. Holy, what the fuck was that? It's gonna happen. Like, I'm gonna make it as difficult as possible for you guys to play the game. Just by playing stuff that makes stuff cost more. I unlock. Like... I unlock the seven seals. I can make it so you guys can't cast anything from exile or nothing can enter from exile and every time you cast a creature spell it gets exiled and it's just like... Yeah, no, I, I've seen some stuff, like, I have some cards that do stuff like that, that like make it harder for other people to play the game. So I, I could totally, I could totally vibe with that. Weird. 12 gold? 12? I need more. Anymore. I'm gonna have a good few decks when I come back out. Like, I'm making a Transformers deck that's based around human soldiers. Ooh. In blue and white. Nice. Because Brothers War had so much brother. It's, it's just so much soldier support. And the Phyrexian set that's coming out next is uh, after fucking. Dominaria remastered and all that shit. Um, that shit's gonna have a lot of Phyrexian soldiers. But it's even more soldier support. Hmm. Oh, I got some money? Oh, jeez. Oh, okay, I got random money. Hell yeah. I got a Planeswalker from this set, too. Dessert? I didn't... What's that? I got dessert before going down to the last floor. Nice. And now I'm on the end. So, yeah, I officially, hopefully, am about to go and clear this. After I make the stack deck, I'm going to be making a is it. Um, well, after I make the stacks deck and the soldier deck, I'm going to make a is it artifact deck. Nice. Because I know you have a black artifact deck, so I kind of want to do the opposite of what you're doing. I was I was honestly thinking of making a, a red-blue one here soon. Okay. Like, I was actually looking into it because I have a few... Yeah, but I, I'm fighting Super Greed right now, or Ultra Greed. Nice. How's it going? It's going. You trying to play something after you get that one? Uh, depends on if I win or not. If I if I win, I'm probably going to like upload it. If I lose, I'm still probably going to get off and upload it. But... Um, Depends on how I'm feeling, because I do have work tonight. Oh, Jesus. He's unlocking the doors. Babylon progged because I'm at half a heart. And I'm dead. <laughs> I made it to the very end. Damn. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, fuck. I have been meaning to get on to Minecraft because that day that I played last... I, I went into the nether myself too, right? And I uh, I was going so far. I was like thousands of blocks away from my, my portal. Like just searching. Like for anything. I found like a bastion. But I'm looking for a fortress for nether wart and blaze rods. I have not found a single one. 
like there. <laughs> like I'm not sure if I'm going the wrong direction. I'm not sure what the fuck. But I died. Like two, three thousand blocks away. Like negative. Way far the fuck out there. And yeah. I was just like, hmm. Yeah, I'm not playing Minecraft for a little bit. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. So I've been we playing, can play Terraria. Yeah. Like I've been grinding out. Well, no, that was like a week or so ago. Like I've been like mm -hmm. just playing The Binding of Isaac and uh, Slay the Spire, and just unlocking everybody. Obviously, you know, just trying to unlock Lilith now with beating greed mode with Azazel. Mm -hmm. I unlocked Samson yesterday. I got my practice in with Azazel. And nice. about to say, I don't know how to unlock anybody else because it doesn't tell me. So that's why I open Lilith and then Apollyon and then I don't fucking know who else. But why is it why is it so fucking specific? Why do I have to do it with Azazel? I probably do it with Because else. they know it's hard. Like, I, I, I don't know. 